Hi, welcome to How to Repair. In this video series I'm going to be going through the top 10 faults on single ovens and cookers. We're going to go through how to diagnose the problem on your cooker, how to rectify the problem and also to get you to the relevant parts that you need for your cooker and associated videos to help you fit the components to your cooker correctly. You will be able to identify the part for your cooker. You will need the full model number. This can normally be found around the cooker door frame. Sometimes they wear off. Sometimes you may need to take the cooker out of its housing in the kitchen and the number will either be on the side of the cooker or on the rear of the cooker. Make sure you get the correct model number to be able to identify the part correctly. I will be uploading these over the course of the next few weeks. They will also have links in the description below and also on the cards above to all the relevant videos and components. Do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also click the bell icon. This will give you notification to when a new video is being uploaded and also other programs that are coming during the course of this winter with regards live streaming questions and answers to help you rectify the problems on your appliances. In this video we'll be dealing with the grill on the oven, how it's controlled, what elements are used for the grill and the different types of controls that actually monitor the temperature of the grill. First let's discuss the elements. There are basically three types of elements that are used, single, dual and as you can see in the picture above, an infrared type system uh, which is a little bit faster. The elements normally are constructed with the mounting plate that hold it to the top of the cooker. You normally have two terminals on a single, they may be duals and then you will have the, either the earth mounting or it, the earth may be fixed to the chassis. On dual grill elements, exactly the same, you will either have the inner and outer part of the grill or it may be constructed to the left and to the right. These normally have four terminals. Sometimes there will only be three terminal spade connections because the two sides of the element on say the neutral side are joined and you will only have one wire for the two sides but on the other side you will have two separate terminals for inner and outer or left and right. The next thing we need to look at is what controls the elements. Now on most cookers they use the thermostat which is fitted to the oven. The capillary tube is mounted very close on the top to the grill. So basically as the energy is coming downwards from the grill the capillary tube gets hot, expands the gas and then this controls the actual thermostat. You'll see all about this in another video. The other system is an energy regulator. Now energy regulators are basically a bimetal strip which will uh, basically send electricity through to the element until the bimetal strip gets hot and then this will click the points out. I'll explain all about that in a minute. So normally you would turn your oven on to the grill setting then you would turn the thermostat on. When you turn the thermostat on, the red light will come on. This will say it's sending electricity to the element. When it reaches the required temperature, the light will go out. And as it cycles, it will turn on the light, turn off the light. The energy regulators do exactly the same. They will turn the light on when electricity is going through to the element and they will turn electricity off. The selector switch may have two functions for the grill, the inner and the outer. This means that the selector switch will allocate where the electricity is going, which part of the element. Now on a dual element, 
if you do have a double circuit uh, any, uh, selector switch it will only send electricity to the inner or the outer but if it's on full it would send electricity to both and then the thermostat will control the temperature. There are many different types of energy regulator and thermostats uh, EGO, Diamond H, Sunvik, Turnwright uh, are just a few of the manufacturers. Now the way the thermostats work whether it's a thermostat or energy regulator is your selector switch will choose which side of the element is used or whether the whole element is used. Now this then allows electricity to go through to the element. The control of the elements is done by the thermostat or energy regulator. Now I've taken this energy regulator apart so I can explain and I've also taken this thermostat apart so I can show you. The selector switch will control where the electricity is going to, in other words to the element or which side of the element. This then is controlled by either the thermostat or the energy regulator. Now I've dissected both of these so I can explain how they work. The probe or capillary tube is next to the grill element. Now this will also control the temperature in the oven. Um, basically the gas gets hot as the temperature rises in the oven. This expands and goes up a tube which is called the capillary tube to the thermostat. Now this expands a little arm which you can see here and basically this arm as you set it to a higher setting will make the distance slightly larger. This then as it reaches temperature opens and shuts a set of points and this is what allows the electricity to go through to the element therefore controlling the temperature on and off as the temperature is reached. With an energy regulator this isn't done with a mechanical process this is done with a bimetal strip. Now if you look closely the energy regulator in the off position the points are open. Again when you set the energy regulator to maximum temperature the points are locked which means electricity is going through to the element constantly and the element will glow red all the time. But if the thermostat is set to say 50% the bimetal strip at the back here will expand, straighten the arm out and open and shut the points. This then cycles the, thermos, uh, the element on and off. On more modern cookers you have printed circuit boards. Printed circuit boards receive their data via NTC sensors. As the NTC sensor gets hot it will change the resistance value going to the circuit board. The program on the circuit board then will understand the information coming from the NTC sensor then it will open and shut a relay on the circuit board to the appropriate grill function that you have selected. Now I've explained how the grill works on all three different thermostatic systems. You need to understand what faults can occur. The most common fault to occur is either the grill element has become open circuit this means that the element is unable to heat and therefore you will get no heat from the grill setting whatsoever. You may also have only a partial failure on a dual grill element. This means that the grill element may work on an inner function but not the outer function. Uh, this will possibly stop the main oven working if you have a base element and a grill element which controls the oven temperature or if you just have a split grill where you have the inner function of the grill or the outer function or the two combined uh, this could be tripping the electricity 
or it may be that just one part of the element has failed. Common fault. The second most common fault to occur with grills is not actually the thermostatic systems, it is the selector switch. And as I've said in many videos, selector switches are not always used in the correct fashion. I will discuss this in a latter video when I deal with selector switches. But you should always remember when using the functions on the cooker, you should always select the selector switch first before turning the energy regulator or the thermostat on. This is designed to actually open and shut the points with the correct ampage, but the selector switch is not. Now, when turning the oven off, you should always turn, or the grill off, you should always turn the grill off first at the thermostat before turning the grill off on the selector switch. This will make the cooker last a lot longer. Next, the thermostat conventional type can fail when the capillary tube is damaged. This would normally stop the grill from cycling. In other words, if the capillary tube was uh, damaged or the gas had been lost inside, therefore the uh, grill will not be able to cycle at temperature and it would only be working on full heat. The next is the energy regulator. The energy regulators can become open circuit uh, and they can also stop functioning with regards cycling the grill on and off. So in other words, again, this may be that the grill will only work flat out but not actually control the temperature of the grill for your cooking. And again, on the more modern cookers, NTC sensors can fail with the circuit board types. Relays are a common fault on the circuit boards and also sometimes the circuit board itself may fail. I hope this gives you a good understanding of what can go wrong with your grill and how to diagnose the problem. There are many more videos at the website with regards changing these individual components and also videos showing you how to test elements and also change elements. In the next video we'll be looking at fan oven motors and how they distribute the air and common faults that can occur on these.